guess where we're going. <laughs> Are you asking yeah. me? Yeah. <laughs> uh, hmm. <laughs> going somewhere we haven't been before. Yeah, we're going to the Macaw Sanctuary and we're going with Wayne. Hi. <laughs> This is Kathy's cousin Wayne. He's coming with us. He get, he's getting us out of the house doing some fun stuff. So we're really looking forward to uh, checking out some macaws. We see them once in a while flying over our apartment into the distance, but they're like this big. And so we're hoping to get it close and personal with them this time. So we just arrived at the uh, wild macaw reserve. We can hear them like crazy. There's lots of squawking going on in the background. We are about half an hour early, so we'll just do a wander about and um, see what happens. Check out that tree right there. I wouldn't want to, you know, trip and land on that. Because if anybody knows me, knows that I do trip. I'm a bit of a klutz, so it's quite likely that that could happen. It's humid, yes. Yes, there's a few mosquitoes out here too. It's Kathy's favorite. Um, we're just waiting for the tour to begin. It looks like we'll start with a bit of a show. Uh, a show? Per oh, a projector. Let's see a projector. A production. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like that. So the sanctuary has a website, and you can become a partner no matter where you're where you live and uh, donate to uh, the preservation of the macaws it's quite rare to see scarlet macaws in costa rica it's even more rare to see green macaws macaws habitats were decimated due to agricultural deforestation for the purpose of raising cattle and until recently, macaws were considered extinct in Costa Rica. Thanks to the efforts of macaw sanctuaries such as this one, we are starting to see a resurgence of macaws appearing in Costa Rica. These ones are located in Playa Islita, on the Pacific coast of the Nicoya Peninsula. are still more difficult to sight and are more prevalent on the Caribbean side of the country. These ones are between 13 and 17 years. Oh. The youngest was three, the oldest was seven. They stay in this immediate area? Well, this one, yes, because of the, the, the smaller ones, ones. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, the rest are by their own. Mm -hmm. Now and then there are five, seven, ten, so. It's very unpredictable, but most of the time there are two, even four, so but not a, a one interesting thing about them is that they, you see that they look just the same, the same color, mm -hmm. size, because there's that difference between females and males that we can tell by looking. It's only through a blood test that we know which one is females and males. Oh, okay. And and how they find the partner is through the pheromones. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah. And it's also how they make difference between the relatives because they often they don't make the common is that they don't make with relatives. They, they move around yeah. actually, so that's why they are already in the pack because they are uh -huh, like checking different areas and decide to stay. To avoid inbreeding, mm -hmm. so then they they come back to go back to the, the first family, you know, they uh -huh. bring the genes back to the Ex back exactly, back to yeah. And because they may <coughs> collide, also we believe is is the reason they it's not different between them. 